What's up YouTube? I hope each and every one of you guys are healthy and enjoying life today. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the 2024 Lincoln Nautilus Reserve 1 with the Jet Appearance Package. Huge thank you to Thomas Proctor over at Ted Britt Lincoln of Chantilly, Virginia for allowing me to do this video for you guys today. If you are interested in this particular Nautilus or any Lincoln product, then I'll be sure to have Thomas's information on screen as well as in the description box down below. But with that said, let's get into the video. All right, well, just like usual, first I'm gonna talk about the exterior and the performance. So like I said, this is a 2024 Lincoln Nautilus Reserve 1. And this particular one has been painted in the optional $750 lustrous gray metallic. I wanted to preface this video by saying for 2024, Lincoln redesigned the Nautilus inside and out with sharper exterior looks, more interior technology, and dimensions wise, it is also larger than before. Now as standard with the Reserve One, you get adaptive LED headlights with automatic high beams as well as LED daytime running lights, LED turn signals, a front LED light bar, and an illuminating Lincoln logo. And taking a step to the left, as mentioned earlier in the video, this one's been optioned with the $3,000 Jet Appearance Package, which gives you the sporty front bumper, the gloss black front grille, and the gloss black lower fascia. I'll point each of those out to you individually uh, as we progress throughout this video, starting with our front grille. So here's a closer view of the front grille. You can see your illuminating Lincoln logo at the center of it. And then at the bottom of your Lincoln logo is where you will find your forward facing camera. And that is because the Reserve One comes standard with a 360 degree view camera system. Now coming down just a little bit more, you get a gloss black mesh like lower grill down here. And then you also get gloss black outer grills both there and there with that trim piece that kind of flares in towards your uh, center grill. You can see that is what I'm referring to there. And then with the jet appearance package, you get this gray trim piece here. Whereas otherwise, if you didn't get the jet appearance package, it would be chrome. And then also with the jet appearance package, as mentioned, you get that gloss black lower fascia down here. And as standard with the reserve one, you get six forward facing sensors as well as 7.9 inches of ground clearance. Now here's a front three quarter shot of this thing. Again, I think this thing looks so much better than it has before. There was uh, one next to the previous gen uh, and at the dealership last week. And it, it's, it's a night and day difference. It really is. It looks so much more aggressive, so much better. And it, honestly, it takes it from like, you know, a low end luxury SUV to a very high end luxury SUV looks wise in my personal opinion. Anyways, coming on down the side, you get body color, wheel arch moldings, and doesn't matter if you get the reserve one, two or three, they all get an adaptive suspension, which I don't know if this is placebo, but I can kind of feel it driving down the road because this thing just drives down the road super smoothly. And then it also feels like it tightens up when you put it into a corner. So I think that is pretty nice. And then I apologize if there is any wind noise, the wind's basically gonna be blowing directly into the camera here. But with the Jet Appearance Package, you get these 22 inch gloss black with machine accent wheels that are wrapped in 25 Goodyear Eagle Touring all season tires. I will give you a view of the tread pattern on these tires here real quick. That is what the tread pattern looks like. You also get a side marker light right here that does light up. And then coming up just a little bit more, I wanted to mention that you do get heated and rain sensing wipers as well as gloss black side view mirrors with integrated turn signals. And as standard, these side view mirrors are heated, power folding, the driver side mirror is auto dimming. You get memory functions. So not only is it going to memorize your steering wheel setting and your seat setting, the vehicle is also going to memorize your side view mirror settings with the three memory seat adjustment settings that you get as standard with the reserve one. You also will find your blind spot monitoring on the outer left hand side of your driver side mirror and on the outer right hand side of your passenger side mirror and then a couple other things is that you do have your camera located right there and that camera works with your 360 degree view camera system and a puddle light right there as well now let me give you a little side profile shot of the new nautilus is it just me or do you guys notice very much of like the aviator design language back here, which I think is awesome. I'll get to that in a second. With the jet appearance package, you do get these gray roof rails. So here's a closer view of that. Uh, and then also all the Nautiluses get the black two-tone roof. So even if you don't get the jet appearance package, you're still gonna get the black painted roof, which I think looks awesome. It makes this thing look super sporty and honestly kind of Range Rover-esque. 
But anyways, you also get the gloss black window trim. You get your door handles with keyless access. You have your keypad right here. And then with the Jet Appearance Package, it replaces this piece, which would normally be in chrome, and it makes it that gray. Then you also get some gloss black trim above that and the chrome Nautilus lettering. Coming down just a little bit, you can see that you do get door cladding, and that is with the Jet Appearance Package. The Jet Appearance Package gives you the gloss black door cladding with the gray accenting. So you can see all of this is gloss black, then you get the gray accenting, and coming towards the rear end, you open up your fuel door, you have your capless filler neck, 87 octane will do you just fine with this thing. And then let me give you a rear three quarter shot of this thing. Again, like in this area right here, it looks very GLE Mercedes to me, mixed with like the Aviator and Porsche Macan. I don't know, I could be the only one who thinks that, but I'm talking about like this area if you block that off. And is that just me? Let me know in the comments down below. But anyways, up top here, you get your gloss black shark fin antenna. You also get your third brake light back here. You get a rear window defroster. LED tail lights do come standard with this thing. And I wanted to point out that right here, you can see your chrome Lincoln lettering. You also get your backup camera located right there. And then if you put your finger underneath your second L, that is the button in which you press to open up your power lift gate. If you wanted the hands-free power lift gate, you would have to look into getting the $5,775 reserve two, which would give you the hands-free lift gate. But anyways, I don't think you really need that. This is a ton of storage space in the back of this SUV, considering you know its size. So I'm very impressed with the amount of storage space that you get behind the second row seats back here. You also get a storage cubby on both sides. This is a grocery bag hook. You get the same thing on this side, but to the left of the grocery bag hook on the passenger side of the vehicle, you have an LED light. You also get a 12 volt power outlet on the driver's side of the trunk. And then if you press either of these two buttons, that is going to drop your second row seats. However, it is not going to raise your second row seats. These buttons only drop the second row seats. And then if you lifted everything up, that is where you'll find your spare tire and your jack. And that's kind of about it for what we got going on here in the trunk area. Tons and tons of storage space back here. But also you get a little light right there, pressing on that button and the power lift gate will begin to close. And as mentioned earlier, a few times, this one's been optioned with the Jet Appearance Package. And with the Jet Appearance Package back here, you get the sporty body color bumper with the black and gray accents. So all of this down here uh, is body color, like these pieces, like right here. Then that is the gray accenting. And then in between those two is that gloss black accenting that I was mentioning. Uh, and then you also get another six parking sensors back here. And the max tow capacity is 1,750 pounds. And that is the Wilk, um, Lincoln Embrace. You can see that special lighting when you walk up to the vehicle but yes not the most capable when it comes to towing however you can tow a jet ski maybe two but that's kind of about pushing it two jet skis is kind of about pushing it so you know again not the most capable when it comes to towing however you know if you're looking at getting something to tow your boat this might not be the suv for you however if you got a jet ski you can tow it and this thing is also super comfortable and you'll see that when i show you the interior but with that stuff out of the way let's move into performance popping open that hood reveals the two liter turbo four cylinder that makes 250 horsepower and 275 pound feet of torque it is mated to an eight speed automatic transmission for a zero to 60 time in seven seconds. And if you were wondering about fuel economy, you can achieve 21 miles per gallon in the city, 29 miles per gallon on the highway for 24 miles per gallon combined with standard all wheel drive. I did want to mention that they do offer a hybrid powertrain for this, but if it were me, I would go with the two liter turbo four cylinder. That is just my personal preference after driving both of them. But if you're enjoying the video so far today, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. I'm on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and I cannot reach my goal without your support. So if you're enjoying the video, if you've learned anything from the video, please just take a second to like, comment, and subscribe. Those three things look very good for my channel in the YouTube algorithm and I would greatly appreciate it if you do that. But with that stuff out of the way, Let's move into the interior.
Moving on into the interior, as mentioned earlier in the video, you do get keyless access. So all you have to do is have your key fob in your pocket, walk up to the vehicle, put your hand behind the door handle and it will unlock. You can also lock it by pressing this button right here, but you can also unlock and or lock it by remembering your key code, typing in your key code, that will unlock it. And if you wanted to lock it back up, you press the seven, eight and nine oh buttons simultaneously and the vehicle will lock back up. But this is what the key fob looks like. And then going over the functions on the key fob, you have your unlock function, your lock function, your remote start function, your power lift gate function, and your panic function. And in order to remote start the vehicle, you have to press the lock button, then press this button twice, lock twice, and it will fire right up. But now let's take a look at what the interior of this has to offer. So as mentioned a few times before, this one's been optioned with the $3,000 jet appearance package, which gives you the black onyx leather trimmed seats with the suede inserts. They look very nice, but I'm gonna start with our door panel here. So this is what the door panel looks like. You get some leather up top here with some accent colored stitching. Then you get your ambient lighting strips, all three there, there, and there you get you're unlocking your lock functions, three memory seat adjustment settings, a speaker. This button is going to power fold in or out your side view mirrors. This is your uh, button to restrict your passenger window privileges and it also is also the child lock for the second row passengers. Then you have your side view mirror controls. You get automatic up and down windows at all four corners. This is how you get out of the vehicle. You get a nicely padded and leather wrapped armrest with some accent colored stitching, a little bit of storage space down here and another speaker. You also get the brushed aluminum Lincoln door sill as well as power adjustable front seats. And by the way, both of these front seats are heated and ventilated with three levels of adjustability. And then you also do get the adjustable headrest forwards and backwards, which is very nice on a long road trip. But you can see you get the leather trimming, you get some of that suede, very nice looking. But stepping on into the interior, let's press this button here and get access to the entire interior. So now what I'm gonna do do is walk you throughout the entire interior even though you may notice what is new for 2024 I'm gonna get to that in a second but we're gonna start down here so pressing on that button is going to open and or close your power lift gate this is going to dim your gauge cluster as well as your backlit buttons this is going to brighten your gauge cluster as well as your backlit buttons and then this is your headlight control switch so all the way up headlights on that is headlights automatic daytime running lights on and headlights off all the way at the bottom so i like to leave it in automatic personally and then also as standard with the reserve one you do get a power tilting and telescoping steering wheel so you can bring the steering wheel out you can push it back in you can also bring it up and down as well so that's up that is down and that's kind of about it for that now let's take a listen to the turn signal That is what the turn signal sounds like. And then zooming back out, you get a leather wrapped steering wheel and the steering wheel is also heated. And to turn your heated steering wheel on, you press that button right there. And that is how you turn the heated steering wheel on. But coming back over to here, just like any other vehicle, you have your horn at the center. So let's take a listen to it. That is what the horn sounds like on the Nautilus. Now this right here is for your blue cruise. I could not see those lights that just flashed right there. That is just picking up on camera due to the frame rate of the camera. I cannot see those in person, but blue cruise is your hands-free driving system on highways. So that is what that is there. Basically read your eyes, make sure you're, that you're paying attention to the road. But coming over to here, you can see you get these four blank switches, or at least they look blank. So when you run your finger across them, you can see on screen right now that this bottom section uh, is basically your lane keeping stuff, which is right about there. And then up top there, you have your cruise control stuff. So I'm gonna click the cruise control button. And now it is my set button, my reset button, and my gap adjust. So that means that this is my set button. This is my reset button. And this is my gap adjust button. So you can see that this is the gap adjust. This is the reset set. And then pressing on that is to turn the cruise control system off. All that stuff will go back away. And then come to this side of the steering wheel. This is to volume up. This is to volume down and it's showing you on screen right now. So this is volume up. This is volume down. This is to go backwards on a track. This is to go forwards on a track. This is to pause the track, and then this is to speak to the vehicle. So here's a closer view of what that looks like. So you can see that's the up uh, volume, down volume, pause, back on a track, forward on a track, and basically just 
you know shows you what this is when you run your finger across it as you can see what it's doing on screen right now then you have your windshield wiper control stock there as mentioned you do get rain sensing wipers as standard which is definitely very nice now coming up to this so this is all new for 2024 and it is a 48 inch dash mounted display it looks awesome it works great uh, it's the only problem is is that the GoPro doesn't do a very good job at picking up uh, what is on the screen. So you can see maybe all the way to the left right now, you can see your fuel range. You also have your fuel gauge, letting me know that I'm unbuckled. That is your auto stop start stuff. And then I'm not sure if you can see, but it's kind of like mountainous kind of terrain here, but it's also kind of like in space. That's kind of like the background. You can see the stars up top there. Uh, and then up here, you can see that is for your lane keeping stuff. That is the speed limit sign. That is the digital speedometer readout. Then you have your transmission status stuff right there, your coolant temperature gauge, ambient exterior temperature. That is the compass and that is the odometer all the way over there. So right here, if I had this vehicle, you know, set up like I was the owner of it, you'd log into your Google stuff, et cetera. This is where your Google map stuff would display. So this is basically your nav would display right here on the screen. I just don't have it set up to like that right now. But then coming to this side of the screen, right now this is displaying the media stuff at the center, it's the weather stuff. However, again, because the vehicle is not set up for like an owner yet, uh, you cannot see the weather yet. And then over there, it is the current time. So you can actually adjust all three of these widgets throughout this screen here. So I guess before I get into um, that, I should tell you the size of this screen. So this is the 11.1 inch infotainment system with wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android auto connectivity. So you can see that right there. You can see those three widgets. If you click on that button, that is going to bring you into this screen. So you can see right now it's the media stuff, the weather stuff and the clock. I can also flip this on and that's the calm screen. So now it's just displaying that interesting background there, uh, which is basically just like, you know, the space theme. So I can turn that back off and now it's not gonna be calm screen anymore. And basically you can see that's my media stuff. I can pull that down. So now that is nothing and I can put my fuel economy stuff right there. So now that is my fuel economy stuff. And then let's say I don't want the weather there anymore. So I'm gonna pull that down and I'm gonna bring the media stuff to right about there. So now that is the media stuff. And then if I pull this down, my clock, I'm gonna put my tire pressure stuff over there. So take a look at everything that you can put. So right now it's displaying the fuel stuff. It's displaying the media stuff and it is displaying the tire pressure stuff over there. So you can put any of these things on that screen uh, however you want it to be. Um, but yeah, that's just how I have that set up right now. So you just go to that button right there and that, that will control that side of the screen. So this is actually not very hard to use. It looks intimidating a little bit when you're first getting into it, but after spending like five minutes behind the wheel, it's really not that difficult to use. So. Um, just figured I'd point that kind of stuff out because I think the widgets adjustable is pretty cool. And then also I wanted to mention is that, you know, a lot of manufacturers recently have been moving to screens and the screens that just have them propped up and you kind of have to almost like look over the screens to see what you're, you know, driving into. But Lincoln did a fantastic job at putting this thing down low enough to where it's at the perfect height to where you don't have to like look over. You basically just look straight and it's not like in your way, if that makes sense. So I think Lincoln did a great job at setting this here. The only real gripe that I do have with it um, is that you can't look through the gauge cluster through the center of the steering wheel. You kind of have to move the steering wheel down in order to see this kind of stuff. But now that I found my comfortable position, it's not that big of a deal. You know what I'm saying? Now I from the last video to this video, I found a comfortable position to where it's not an issue anymore. But, you know, if you first get into it, it might take you a couple of days to really find what, you know, position you want to be at to see this, if that makes sense. So anyways, coming over to this screen, this is what your home screen looks like. So you can see all of your shortcut buttons on this side of the screen, as well as the time. Uh, the Google Maps stuff is not set up. So this is where your Google Maps would be here, as well as right there on the big screen. Uh, and then right now, this is profile one. That's letting me know that my phone is connected. Then you have your media stuff here. And then over here, you get your notification stuff. That's letting me know that the Wi-Fi is off. And then that is like your location services stuff. 
Um, so anyways, now we're gonna go into the vehicle stuff. So you, this is what the vehicle screen looks like. If you press that right there, that is going to pop open your power lift gate. You can also go in between a couple of your different drive modes. So you get your normal mode, conserve, excite is like your sport mode. Then you have your slippery mode, deep conditions. And if you swipe over to here, you can reset them to the default order. I guess that means you can move them around to whichever way you want them to be. So let's say you use normal and excite the most, then you'd have those. And then you, let's say you don't use conserve. You can move that back over to there, but you can also go over here and you can reset it to default order. So now it's just in the default order. But going back, uh, you also have your ambient lighting. You can choose between a few different colors. You can adjust the brightness of the ambient lighting, uh, but here are your different ambient lighting colors that you can choose from. So I think that is pretty cool. Then you have your auto hold. The auto hold is basically, let's say you're stuck in traffic, tired of holding your foot down on your brake, you'd press that button and the vehicle will hold you in place by itself with its braking system. Then you have your traction control on or off. This is your vehicle status screen. So your oil life, your tire pressure stuff. Then you get your valet mode. You can go in between your different settings here. So you get your sound settings, Bluetooth settings, driver assistance settings. I always like to show the driver assistance screen. So these are all of your different driver assistance features here. Go in between all of those different things. Then you get your vehicle settings. You can go in between all of these different things here. Just, you know, very, very easy to use and you can see all the different settings that I'm scrolling throughout right now. I'm not gonna go through all of them. They make the video way too long. Uh, and then this is your apps. So you get your maps, Google Play Store, Google Assistant, AM, FM, Bluetooth audio, your messages, Wi-Fi hotspot, your owner's manual you can pull up throughout this screen. And then you obviously also have your podcast, your Google News, XM, and then you also have your YouTube app right there. So if you click on the YouTube app, basically you could watch YouTube right here on the screen if this was set up. Uh, but it is not set up at the moment. And then again, that is your widget screen for that side of your 48 inch screen. And then you can see right there, that is the CarPlay button. And then that is going to pop up my Apple CarPlay screen. Uh, so if you go into here actually, and then press that, that is going to be full screen Apple CarPlay. So now it takes up the entire screen. You can click that button again, and then it's gonna go back into this view. So you have the Lincoln shortcut button. So anyways, the only gripe I really have with this vehicle is the lack of physical climate controls. And I don't care what brand you are, what kind of car it is. If you don't have physical climate controls, I'm always going to make a complaint. So that is why I'm making a complaint now, even though it is rather easy to use. It's just an extra step. You know, instead of being able to drive down the road and basically turn up my fan speed like that, I have to go throughout the screen and I got to click this, click this, click this in order to turn the fan speed. And I know it's not that difficult, but it's not like intuitive to where like you can be focusing here, but then your hand can be over here doing something. You really kind of have to pay attention so you're not touching the wrong thing. So that's why I think manufacturers really need to bring back the physical climate controls. That is just my rant for the day. Anyways, if you want the climate control to take up the entire screen, you would click right here. And now the climate controls are taking up the entire screen. If you click right here, that's gonna pop up your heated and your ventilated seats. Again, you get three levels of adjustability. And then for the driver, heated and ventilated seats, three levels of adjustability, heated steering wheel, one level of adjustability. And again, all of this will always be at the bottom of your screen. Even if you do go into full screen Apple CarPlay, the climate control stuff is always going to be at the bottom of the screen. So two HVAC vents, you have your push button or piano key transmission. So you can go in between these different gears here. And then going through these physical controls, this is to turn your auto stop start system on or off. This is gonna turn your hazards on. This is uh, for your park assist. So if you press that, you can go into your parking assist and stuff. Uh, and basically it will pull you into a parallel or a perpendicular parking spot. Um, that is what that button does. So you have park assist with this vehicle. Then that is going to turn the max front defroster on. This is gonna pop up your 360 degree view camera system up top there. You can go in between your different camera views right there. Personally for me, this is the view that I like the most. And then you can zoom in between your different views. So you can see right now it zoomed into there. I'm gonna zoom it into the back left corner. And basically, I don't know why you would use that but you have the opportunity to use it, so uh, whatever. Then I guess you can also move it backwards and forwards, so that's kind of cool. Uh, but anyways, yeah. So that is what that button does, and then this is your drive mode selector. Again, you can go in between your different drive modes there. Uh, and then this is your volume control knob here. You get a wireless charging pad as standard. This is an iPhone 14 Pro Max, one of the bigger phones on the market, and it fits down in the wireless charging pad. Then you get two cup holders here. 
You get a USB-A port, a USB-C port, and a light right here. You can also set your phone or your key fob down in there. It makes a very good spot to set a key fob, to be honest. And then let's say you don't want to see any of this stuff. You can slide this forward, and now that is going to block all of that stuff off. Then you get a leather-wrapped armrest, some accent-colored stitching, and when you open this thing up, it reveals two USB-C ports, a 12-volt power outlet. You get this divider right here, and honestly, quite a decent amount of storage space down in here. Uh, just be mindful of what you set down in here because this space can disappear kind of quickly. You also get a light down in there as well. But closing that back up, going over to here, you do not get a lockable glove box. You get a decent amount of storage space in the glove box. Uh, there's kind of a view of the storage space. So uh, decent storage space, not a ton, but not like not much. Actually, I think this has more storage space in the glove box than the Navigator I just did a video with, which is kind of funny. Uh, and then you get a frameless auto dimming rear view mirror. The driver gets a light, passenger gets a light, both of which are LED. This is your instant dome light on button. It turns on all the interior dome lights, that button there. Uh, and then this button is whether you want the lights to turn on or not when you open up the door. So you see how it's illuminated in amber? Now if I open up the door, the interior lights will not turn on. But if I press that button again, now when I open up the door, they will turn on. So that is what that button does. And then you also do get a universal garage door opener. Opening up your visor, you get a vanity mirror with two vanity lights. You also get a little clip right here. And then the visors do slide forwards and backwards dependent on where the sun is shining. And then that's kind of about it. I guess one more thing is down here, you get some pass-through storage space. Um, to the passenger side, you can see I'm reaching um, from the passenger side, so you can set some stuff down in there. But uh, yeah, that's kind of about it for what we got going on here at the front except I guess you also get a poop handle here and an O-poop handle there, as well as an O-poop handle for the passenger over there, but the driver does not get an O-poop handle. Now that's kind of about it. Uh, I wanted to go over everything that you get as standard with this vehicle. So you get a 360 degree view camera system as standard. You get the wireless charging pad, the heated and the ventilated front seats, the heated steering wheel, the dual zone climate control system, um, and the active park assist. Um, but now, a couple different reserves you can get. So they have the Reserve 1, the Reserve 2, and the Reserve 3. The Reserve 3 is the loaded up model. This one is kind of like the bottom of the model, bottom of the barrel, but it's really not. You know what I mean? Like this is honestly the best value because you pretty much get everything that you need and the Reserve 2 and the Reserve 3 kind of give you the things that you don't really need. You know what I'm saying? So here's the Reserve 2. Here's the Reserve 3. You can take a look at which one you want. Uh, personally, I think the best value is the Reserve 1, in my personal opinion. But now, I'm going to throw the entire window sticker on screen, and you can take a look at the options that this vehicle has, everything you get standard, uh, and then everything you want to check out, you know? But I'm just going to highlight the MSRP. So the MSRP of the way that this particular 2024 Nautilus Reserve 1 is spec is $59,895. I know that is a lot of money, but I think you get a lot of car for your money it's very comfortable you get pretty much a fully loaded vehicle in a way i know you don't get the pano roof and you know the digital scent and all that kind of stuff but you get everything else that you need you know what i mean this vehicle has some stuff that you don't really need like a 360 cam but it has it so i think that is good and honestly for 60k just under 60k i could see it you know what I'm saying? I do want to show you though what we got going on here in these rear seats before getting into the driving portion of the video. So let's take a look at what the rear door panel looks like. This is the door panel. Automatic up and down windows here at the back and you can see the windows don't quite go all the way down but nearly all the way down. Then you get a nicely padded armrest quite a bit of storage space down there you get a speaker here you get a speaker here and this is what your second row seats look like if you pull up on this that can drop them so then you get some fold flat storage space but i'm going to lift them back up and we're going to step in but this is what these seats look like stepping on into the rear seat area i am five foot nine and i am adjusted behind myself i've got plenty of knee and leg room I also get two USB-C ports up top here. You get a seat back pocket behind the driver's seat. You get your dome lights back here. You get a no poo panel, a spot you could set your dry cleaning. And then I'm gonna bring that one up. Same stuff that you get on this side, you get the same over there. But seat back pocket behind that seat, you also get another two USB-C ports up top there. And then you get two HVAC vents and a center fold down armrest. So you get two cup holders in here. 
that is that. And then you get a little bit of storage space. You could set a phone or, you know, like some of those small Kleenex like packets. You could set those down in there as well. But I also wanted to show you is that remember when I said you could pull up on this and that is going to fold flat your second row seats. Well, if I pull up on that again, you can also recline your second row seats. So now I am very, very comfortable in these seats. These second row seats are also just very, very comfortable in and of themselves. And me being a second row passenger, I feel like I could do a long road trip here in these seats. But you know, uh, headroom wise, I've got plenty of headroom as well. So we talked about the exterior, we've talked about the performance, and now we've talked about what's going on here in the interior. So I wanna see what this thing's like to drive as I'm assuming you guys do as well. So I'll see you guys in the driver's seat. All right, now on to the driving portion of the video. Take a listen. While not the quickest vehicle on the road, it's got enough power to make you feel happy and it's got a little bit more than adequate power, right? There's adequate power and then there's this kind of power where it's a little bit more than you need, but it's not a ton, but it's not gonna make you feel like you need any more, if that makes sense. So last week I drove a Nautilus Reserve 3. It was a hybrid and it did not have the jet uh, appearance package. And after driving the hybrid and driving this, honestly, it's kind of a toss up between the two because the hybrid didn't really feel like a hybrid. You know, sometimes with hybrids, you can really feel the engagement and then it kind of becomes like a little like junk, jolty, if that makes sense. So with the hybrid Nautilus, I did not notice any sort of that jolting. You couldn't really even tell that it was a hybrid. So it was honestly one of the better hybrids that I have driven. But personally for me, you know, you spend 1500 bucks additional to get the hybrid. And honestly, I personally prefer this. You know what I mean? I'd, I'd rather, I'm just, I don't feel like I would need the hybrid. You know what I mean? I just, it's not something that I need. And I'd just rather have the two liter turbo four cylinder. I think, you know, there's less going on with the powertrain. So I think long term, I think it would be better. So that's just, you know, the one that's, that's what I would go with. You know what I mean? You might disagree, but when it comes to the highway fuel economy figures between the hybrid and this, they're really not that different. This might get one mile per gallon worse on the highway than the hybrid, whereas the hybrid in the city gets about 10 miles per gallon better. So it just depends, you know, are you gonna be doing a lot of highway driving? If so, then it might not really make sense for you to get the hybrid, but it might make sense at the same time because they're still gonna get the same fuel economy on the highway. It's just, the hybrid's gonna do better in the city so it all comes down to personal preference and you know what you're looking for personally for me i'd probably put that 1500 bucks towards fuel and i would choose the two liter turbo four cylinder i know um you know everybody's gonna have their own personal opinion own personal preference on that that's just the way that i feel and that's the way that i would go now i want to get into the sound system here for a second because with the reserve 2 and the reserve 3 the reserve 2 gives you the 14 speaker revel audio system the Reserve 3 gives you the 28 speaker Revel Ultima sound system. So if you wanna spend another $10,005 for the Reserve 3, you also get the perfect position seats with active motion. I believe they're 28 way, maybe perfect position seats and they give you the active motion. The active motion is the massaging seats. So, you know, it is a very nice vehicle the reserve three because i did a video with one last week however ten thousand dollars is a lot of money so I, I just i don't know if you really need the 28 speaker revel ultima sound system but if your budget is seventy thousand dollars and you're looking for a nice suv then i would recommend getting the reserve three but you know if your budget is sixty thousand dollars right and you don't really want to spend more than that i think the reserve one is a great value you know what i mean you don't need the reserve two even uh that's five thousand seven hundred and seventy five dollars over the reserve one uh, and it gives you the 14 speaker rubble ultima sound system it gives you the digital scent i believe it also gives you the hands-free power lift gate 110 watt inverter and everything else you can read on screen right now i don't even necessarily act it also gives you a panoramic roof so if you're gonna get any of the packages, if you're gonna spring for one of them, I personally like a panoramic roof. I love to have a sunroof in a vehicle, you know. It's not needed for the majority of people, but I do know a lot of people that do prefer having a sunroof. 
So you could get the sunroof, you could skip the sunroof. Personally for me, if you're gonna get any of the packages, you could get the Reserve 2. I think that is the better value between the Reserve 2 and the Reserve 3, but if you got 70K to spend, get the Reserve 3. I think it is definitely worth it if you like the massaging seats and if you really enjoy a very, very good sound system. But I'm gonna skip to the part where I get through all of this traffic because otherwise I'm just gonna be spewing nonsense. So let's skip into that. All right, guys, here we go. Back to it. Hopefully that guy doesn't pull out. That was a little nerve wracking. All right, now I'm gonna give you a nice little acceleration. Okay, it's not quick or it's not fast. It's kind of quick, but it's not like quick, but it's like kind of quick. So it's not gonna you know blow your socks off when it comes to acceleration but if you're looking for just a very comfortable daily driver that is also efficient um, and it gives you you know the nice amenities that you're looking for i think this is a great vehicle at the price point you know what i'm saying so it's very updated i think this brings you know the class of this suv up a level so I think some other manufacturers are gonna kinda have to step their game up when it comes to the interior and everything else because this interior is so nice. Uh, I love this big screen. I, I was kinda hesitant and unsure of you know what I thought about it when I first saw it online. But now that I've experienced it in person, it's actually a really cool screen and um, it's actually kinda useful, you know what I mean? You can just, you just have so much stuff throughout this display but it's not like cluttered it doesn't feel like it's too much stuff it's just kind of like the right amount of stuff you know what i mean so really that side's only three things and this side's really only like two or three things when it comes to the big stuff like the speedometer um the google map stuff transmission status stuff all of that stuff i kind of consider small stuff so it's really like kind of just like a regular gauge cluster except it's laid out throughout a display a digital display so i'm a fan of it and pay attention to like right there you see watch that part fill out as i like start going faster if that makes sense so you'll see the line starts to move across see that see how the line's moving see what i'm saying as i get faster that thing's moving across so that's kind of like your needle you know what I'm saying? Like in a regular car with an analog speedometer, you can see the needle moves. That's kind of like your needle. So if you're going fast, your needle is probably going to be like over there, you can see. So that just kind of gives you, you know, a perception of speed when you see that rather than just the digital speedometer readout. So overall, this thing's super, super comfortable. I think it looks fantastic on the exterior. I think Lincoln did a fantastic job redesigning this thing. Uh, it just, it looks sharp. It looks like the mix of like a Porsche Mercedes slash aviator in the rear. So I think they did a fantastic job. Here's Floored. There's definitely some pumped in audio, but I can't complain because it doesn't sound terrible. Um, but overall, man, the suspension is very good. It's very comfortable. Again, you do get the adaptive suspension, so it is gonna change depending on which drive mode you're in. So if you put it into sport mode, it's gonna tighten up a little bit. Uh, but if you just have it in your normal mode, it's not gonna be loose, but it's not gonna be tight. It's kinda just gonna be like that nice in between. So, I mean, overall, I think this is a great vehicle. I think it looks fantastic. I think you get all the amenities that you can really want in the vehicle with the Reserve One, which I really like. You know, a lot of other manufacturers, you kind of got to option this, option that, option that, and then you're, you know, $10,000 more than the original MSRP was. Whereas with the Reserve One, yes, the price is kind of up there, but basically, you get everything that you need on a vehicle and a little bit more. So that's it for today's video. If you guys did enjoy the video, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. I'm on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and I cannot reach my goal without your support. So if you enjoyed the video, if you learned anything, please just take a second to like, comment, and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. It helps out my channel, help me grow. Um, but yeah, that is it for today's video. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.